Okay, we're back inside theCUBE. This is SiliconAngle.com's uh, continuous exclusive coverage of Strata plus Hadoop World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm um, John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org. SiliconAngle's the place to get all the uh, signal from the noise. Wikibon's where you get your free research. We're our research analyst firms. And we're excited to have uh, Clear Story CEO, Sharmila Mulligan, Sharmilia Mulligan, uh, of Clear Story, welcome to theCUBE. You had a big famous Thank keynote you. yesterday. Thank you. Welcome, so, uh, so Clear Story kind of coming out, new startup. That's um, right. I didn't actually get the official funding numbers, so did you guys disclose that? We did not disclose that. Did you disclose the investors? We sure did. Our investors are um, Andreessen Horowitz, Google Ventures, and Coastal Ventures. Okay, okay, so um, you did announce did that. that. Okay, so from what I heard, good size round in a hot market. Um, you gave the keynote yesterday. We were watching from the balcony because uh, it was so packed. Um, but you had a really good message that I want to drill into. One, the company that you have, and then some of the value propositions that you guys are attacking, and specifically around the innovation and disruption in the marketplace. So first, tell the audience about uh, the company that you founded, yep. uh, and what you guys are doing, where you are, obviously funding. Right, um, so first, uh, thanks for having me here. Clear Story Data is uh, very focused on what we call the last mile problem in data analysis, which is about making it easy for uh, business users and business analysts to be able to consume data from diverse sources. And as you look at all the sources of data available today, it goes beyond just your know, private legacy repositories of data um, and extends to a lot of new big data platforms, many of which everyone's heard about at this uh, couple day event here at Strata. But um, the net of all that is there's this explosive growth across all your private data that is now housed in uh, many different sources, legacy sources, new platforms. But in addition to that, there's also a rich number of sources of external data that is available to tap into. And in fact, there are about 7,000 open data APIs available today that range from sources like Twitter, Facebook, Google Public Data, Netflix, Best Buy, so on and so forth, that are open APIs that allow you to actually extract data from a wealth of other sources. And the real opportunity here for uh, customers is to be able to bring together data from multiple private sources, including the new big data platforms and their legacy platforms, and fuse that with data from public sources that comes from a whole host of different uh, web sources and premium sources available today. And the number of these external sources are going to continue to grow, so we're only at the beginning of the wealth of data available through all those external sources as well. The opportunity here and what Clear Story is focused on is giving you a way to actually bring this together in a very easy to use platform and also making it possible for anyone to actually access data and data at scale and diversity of data and run a analysis that doesn't require them to be highly technical in terms of their skill set. So commodity, uh, co mass consumption of data is the li way we like to think about what Clear Story is doing. Um, other people like to call it a new platform for democratization of data, but call it what you want. The net of it is we want to ease data consumption when looking at data from both private sources and external sources at scale. So you mentioned a couple things there, open data, yeah. APIs, I mean this is where the, mo the move is, movement's going, clearly yeah. um, mashups of data, people call it different things, That's unification right. of data. Pick a buzzword, but basically it's mashing up multiple data sets and doing that really fast, elegant way. In your keynote, you talked about private and public data. Let's drill down on that, because that seems to put a lot of different requirements on the old way of doing things. So, Back in the old days of data warehousing, business intelligence, take us through that old way and new way, and what's different, and what are you guys uh, looking to disrupt? Yeah, so the old way actually relies on primarily relational sources of data with a known or constrained data model. And the tools that emerge to make it possible for data architects and data analysts to derive data out of that s those systems were also designed uh, with that type of constrained model in mind. I mean, they if you look at like the last several decades of tools that emerge that sit on top of the legacy relational sources, they were designed the way they were designed because it came from the constraints of the data model that the sources presented. 
um, where we are today is that the sources of data have changed in terms of the type of model that's now available. So what we are focused on is actually allowing you to work with more of an open data model versus a very constrained data model, which is what we had, were dealing with in the last you know, 15, 20 years. And when you look at the new external sources of data, they come in a variety of different data types, different data structures, and so the openness of the data model becomes very important, and the tools and platforms that now allow you to consume data out of those sources have to be more flexible in nature. So flexibility has become very important as it relates to how you actually design the new tools and the platforms that will sit, sit on top of these sources versus the way you did it before, which is through a very sort of constrained and structured approach. So how do I engage with ClearStory? Um, how you engage, well, we are currently, as a company, we're still in our early access period, so if you want to engage with ClearStory, you can come to clearstorydata.com and you can sign up for our early access. Eventually, how you c engage with ClearStory when we uh, fully go to market is we have a variety of different mechanisms by which our product is going to be available, both direct and indirect, and so there will be you know, very broad market reach um, and accessibility to the product. So there's a service that I can then access and That's right. customize for my own? needs. That's right. So you will be able to log on to a service and be able to get going with the data that you want to work with. So one of the complaints of Hadoop right now is we just had a practitioner on who's saying, you know, she loves the cloud, but it's, it's the, tools, the tools and the tooling up of Hadoop's not there yet. That's because right. Because the business value of, of the data is obviously critical, they want that, but um, she can't spin up all the expertise, right? So that's one, one factor. So the question I have for you is, um, what are you guys doing specifically around Hadoop? Is it just Hadoop solutions and other databases? Are you guys sitting on top? What's the clear story product? Yeah, we look work like? with a diversity of backends and diversity of sources. Um, the legacy relational sources are just as important as the new Hadoop platforms, which are just as important as the rich sources of external data now available. Um, we're not necessarily you know, biased towards one or the other category of source. It's about what the customer is trying to do today, which is derive data from multiple sources wherever they may choose to house that data and wherever that data may live. That data may live in a whole variety of external sources that are not sources they own, but sources that they need to tap into, or it may be data sources that, or platforms they do own, whether it be their traditional relational sources or their new Hadoop platform. So regardless of where your data lives, whether it's external, internal, and the nature of that internal platform, our goal is to make it easy for you to consume data out of those platforms and make it very easy for the non-technical user, so the non, the someone who's not necessarily got a very highly skilled, a highly skilled data analyst or a data architect to be able to actually access data that they couldn't access before. Um, so easing access to data and making it very easy to get to and very easy to combine when you bring yeah. it to together from multiple sources and then being able to explore that so data. truly non-technical. I mean truly non-technical. It doesn't mean that you know technical and data architects and data analysts won't use ClearStory. They absolutely will because it's got the power that they need in terms of how they want to work with data, but we've gone beyond that, which is to make it easy for non-technical users as well. We were just at uh, IBM. And that's why we talk about mass consumption, because that's truly what we're after. We were just at, first of all, we cover this area pretty heavily, and we were just at the uh, Information on Demand event in Vegas. I took the red eye, Dave took the red eye the next day. Um, but uh, the, this idea of data DNA's co concept that Dave and I were talking about, is the where, if, if you don't know where the data came from, Right. You really don't know how real it is. So there's like a whole nother element of kind of kind of thinking around that. And the second thing that's coming up that, that we're covering on the cube here is the humanization of factor. Meaning, and, and I think you touched on this in your yes. keynote about human intelligence is huge, and that the people part of the equation is massively important, and that some geeks overlook. So I want to explore that with you for right. a second. So t tell us your view because you have a lot of history with uh, the data warehouse, the old school, and now the new school. Given all the mashups and the human component, how important do you think that is? And give some examples of, of what you think that's changing the equation for. In other words, what's the role of people and why it's changing? Right, um, so great question. So we believe that as uh, users are presented with more data, um, as data explodes in size, as well as data grows in terms of the diversity of data, you have to be able to aid, what I call aid human insight, right? So the the goal of new tools 
that are focused on data consumption out of these sources and data analysis have to be able to guide the user on what this data really means and what the value of the data is. So we talk about aiding human insight. We talk about amplifying human intelligence. We do believe that you cannot leave it entirely up to a user to figure out what all this data means. But there is a role here for technology to play and to actually aid in the process of them understanding what it means. So progressively taking them through the data and showing them every step of the way what they can do with that data. So that's one way you aid human insight. But there is many different approaches to how to actually how you actually aid human insight in the process of pulling data from multiple sources and dealing with it at scale. Um, the other aspect of this is that you need to um, make sure that your users actually understand and can get to a way to understand what the result really means and whether they've actually arrived at the result or there's more to explore, right? And so that's another element of what ClearStory thinks about and what ClearStory brings is, you know, what you might think is the right result out of a certain insight may not necessarily be, you know, the complete result or the complete insight. There may be an opportunity to explore even more. So how, does, how do you design that into the product? We just had Ben Werther on from Platform and we had a great conversation because he's got some disruption going on with his whole deal with, uh, you know, BI with no ETL and data warehouse required, right. which is a great bumper sticker. You know, you can, it's a total geek bumper sticker. So, okay, you got schema problems. So, to do that kind of flexibility, you need to have a system. So, how did you guys, what's the secret sauce to your product that's going to make the human, who's like, to me, like querying Google? It should be that easy. Right. I shouldn't have to change schema to so ask a different question. I would question. like to reserve until we're actually ah. rolling ah. out the product fully, and I think you'll see. Uh, and I think okay, I just hope talk, can you like talk? Can you show a little bit of. Uh, pleasantly surprised. Will we, will we be blown away? Is that? I <laughs> hope you're blown away. Can you give us we a hope little, to blow everyone away. Can you so give a little breadcrumb, <laughs> feed us a little cracker now, of ask nugget me in a of insight? <laughs> <laughs> when we're ready to do that, we will give you that Let little nugget. But the, the so key here is, and like I'm saying is, we do believe that it's not just about throwing new tools and technology to the user. There is more to it than simplification that. Simplification is critical. Um, and simplification means very different things today than it meant you know, 10 years ago. And simplification when it comes to data at scale and diversity of data, again, means some very different things than what it, what it used to mean. So there is a huge amount of opportunity here, we know it well because we're doing it at ClearStory, to make things a lot more meaningful and easier for the user who doesn't necessarily have a data scientist type of skill set. And that can be done, and that is the focus of the company. And we're in the heart of it and doing it, and I think we're doing it pretty well. And there's, you know, as we unveil more of this, I think you'll see. But um, there's a big aspect of this where we don't believe that everything can be done by the tool itself. The tool has to aid in the process of an insight and get smarter in terms of how it aids in that process. Yeah, so another question you might not answer, but <laughs> <laughs> trying to, uh, is you talked about 7,000 uh, uh, open data APIs yeah. and you showed a, a, a graph in yes. the keynote of this hyperbolic curve, exponential curve, uh, and, and uh, so am I to infer that there's more than just an, 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 a pathway to those APIs, there's some IP around <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. absolutely. And you know, it, out of the 7,000 uh, data APIs, you know, there are a whole host of them that masses and masses of customers want to be able to access, and there are many of them that are very niche, right? But regardless, I mean, there is a massive amount of rich data merging behind all of those um, open data APIs, and just the growth of them is phenomenal. Um, and we are basically, you know, want to think uniquely actually coming at that problem with also recognizing the growth of data in your private data repositories, Hadoop included. And I think that's what makes ClearStory very unique. It's the recognition that not all valuable data lives inside of the organization, that there is a whole amount of valuable data that is emerging outside of your organization. And there's a massive appetite from customers to be able to go find that, even know where it is. I mean, you know, it's not easy to go scour 7,000 APIs. Um, so they need to understand where the value is and be pointed to where the value is. Well, what I like about what you're saying is that it's also recognition that you can't predict what data sources are going to be available in the future. That's right. So you're agnostic to those data sources and building a capability to accommodate those, That's right. whatever they are. Yeah. So you need to build the capability to accommodate what's available now, 
to accommodate what you don't even know about that might be coming down the line here. And you can see the rapid growth of the open data APIs. You're just going to see yes, massive, you know, massive, ma massive amounts of them emerge. So building a platform that knows and has the smarts to actually deal with all of that and has the right architecture to handle it is, a b is very important. And recognizing that customers have a huge need to bring that together with the explosive amount of private data is becoming basically a, a big opportunity out there, and that's what we are focused on. But throwing all this data out to users is not out the answer either, right? Like throwing out 7,000 open data APIs and many, many like of of your internal platforms and allowing consumption of data out of all of these sources is not the answer either, because again, you're just then going to throw too much complexity onto your screen. Um, so how do you actually take all that and make it simple enough where it becomes a highly intuitive process and easy for a non-technical user to manage through that is what we are after. So I want to shift gears, uh, Shamil, talk about you. Okay. So um, this is your first time on theCUBE, so we got to get to know you. Tell sure. us your background. I know you know my friend Greg Sands, great guy, friend. Um, but tell us about your background, where you've been um, in your career, and then I'll ask you a couple pointed questions. Sure, um, so most recently uh, was uh, early days of a company called Astadata that was a big data platform. Um, it's now part of Teradata as a result of the Teradata acquisition last spring. Um, so spent a lot of time in uh, the big data area through Astadata. Prior to that, spent some early days uh, at Cloudera when the Cloudera team was first pulled together. Um, previous to that, I did, uh, that. did a, a company called Opsware, was on the executive management team for Opsware, which was acquired by Heal Packard um, for 1.65 billion, uh, about four and a half years into doing Opsware, which is where I got together with Mark Andreessen and Ben Horwitz. Um, prior to Opsware was at Netscape, so early days of Netscape, and I arrived at Netscape through a company that we uh, put together, three of us, um, for to build basically the first application server um, that was, was that called Kiva, Kiva Software. Kiva, that's right, yeah. And those uh, days. 97. Kiva Software, you got it. <laughs> you show my age. You're, you're <laughs> old school. So been around. Kiva Software <laughs> was acquired in 1997 by Netscape, which is how I arrived at Netscape. I was VP of um, infrastructure products at Netscape, um, and uh, following that, landed at AOL through that acquisition and then did Opsra with Andreessen and Horowitz yeah. um, and uh, big data over the last two, five years. So I wanted to get that out because I want the audience to know uh, how impressive you are and you know, I, knew, I knew your background, but, but really wanted, my next question is to build on that. You've seen cycles of innovation. You've obviously with, through the Kiev acquisition, which at the time was pretty cutting edge stuff and Netscape was doing some cutting edge stuff. Right. Even at the time, all basically founded the web well documented, but as you went through your career, you ended up at the at the end. Prior to this, Opsware, first cloud company, you know, right. Ben, Mark, Insuk, all those guys were doing some great cloud before it was cloud when <laughs> it was all bare metal cloud. But um, now it's different. So I want you to compare the evolution and kind of what's different right now. Why is right now moment in time so transformative? Why now? What's different about now? I, even vis-a-vis -vis client server, web client server, and PC revolution. What's so transformative about this so-called big data or whatever it morphs into? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a good question. What I've mostly spent my career in is shaping new markets, right? We, it was at the beginnings of, you know, shaping the application server market when there was nothing available but web servers. There was no way to do a transaction over the internet, which is why we created Kiva Software. It led to a multi-billion dollar market of application servers, you know, BEA entered mm -hmm. and many others. Um, I saw um, through the shaping of the internet, you know, from the early days of the browser to all the internet infrastructure that was created at Netscape. Um, we at Opsware uh, then went off to actually help manage all that infrastructure. I mean, LoudCloud and Opsware was created to go manage the problem that we actually were the source of at Netscape, which is we created all this infrastructure and <laughs> threw it into data centers and now we had to fi build a platform to go manage it. So we created the data center automation so market. Do, folks. They right. <laughs> solve problems, create other problems, you go solve those it. problems. Um, <laughs> that's in fact, the road someone yeah, and you're part of that pioneer <laughs> class. Mark Andreessen, you know, people doing stuff before it was cool. That's right. You know? So with every you know. step of this, if you look back, 
at least to my career in you know early 90s each time we created a new market but we also following that created a problem right that had to be solved um, so what I see right now with big data is we're in a similar phenomena we've actually created a whole lot of new applications that throw off so much data that we are now in an era of you know having to go solve the problem of how do you manage all this data what I find really unique about the big data market um, versus some of the other markets I've done in the past and seen evolved is that in this case it's not technology creation for the sake of technology creation it is a dire urgent problem out there that customers are struggling with and we almost cannot like sol can't seem to solve this problem fast enough right the demand is almost like outpacing the technologies that are available today yeah, to I go agree. address the problem so with or without the number of new companies you see in the big data space the big data phenomena is happening right and it's being created by the explosion of data that's coming out of the new applications that organizations are now using and someone has Humans, to go solve machines, that problem. Humans, internet of things. You got it. Machines yeah, so throwing off more data, uh, consumer applications throwing off more data, mobile applications throwing off more data, SaaS based applications throwing off more data. We have basically created this problem yeah. inside of organizations and it's our job to go build technologies to go solve it. I think you, I, we, first of all, 100% agree with you. I think that this transformation is m more powerful than the PC revolution and Absolutely. client server combined, and it's happening faster. So it is a true call to arms for geeks to solve problems. Just like building bridges, I was talking to, to my friend, I'm like, you know, back in the day, you got an engineer to build bridges. Now we got to build tech to solve our data problem, and right. totally agree with you. So it's not yeah. just like, and, and Jeff Hammerbach had the epic quote, you know, that our brightest minds are, are spending their, their machine learning and skill, right. uh, making ads more efficient to click on versus actually solving real problems, so. Um, you know, the data problem is happening with or without us. It's going to yeah, keep getting yeah. worse. It's an opportunity. And either we go and find ways to solve it, or it just keeps getting worse out there, right? And so this is a unique time. I mean, I don't, I think that the set of companies in this space actually ha are in a much more unique position than even what I saw over the last four or five markets I've seen evolve in that in some of those cases we created a technology and the market followed. In this case, the market is already there. I mean, it is ripe, people are in a lot of pain, customers are in a lot of pain, and they are hungry for companies like ourselves to go build technology to yeah, solve the problem. That's why, that's why the whole civil war thing about Hadoop's a non-issue. That's why IBM is embracing uh, Hadoop. That's why HP's here. That's, that's why right. the big companies are here because there's so much to work to be done. There's so much beachhead of opportunity you and wealth it. creation. <laughs> so entrepreneurs, get out <laughs> there and get cracking. To get with that Web 2.0 app and you know get get cracking on the big data problem, Shamil, thanks so much. You're right, a total tech so athlete. Much. Love your background. Great, this is the cube. Uh, we extract the signal from the noise, and then there it is, right there. Clear story. Uh, out to make the stories clearer with the data, making sense of the data. That's the top story here at, at, at Strata. Insights, analytics, the clear story, and also handling the tsunami of data around business value. This is the cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you. That was great. Thank you very much. All right. Eighteen months ago, we set out on really revolutionizing